So we have been shipping a fair bit of wine. Dave actually awarded himself the title Shipper of the Year the other day, um, which is not to be confused with Stripper of the Year. Folks thought they were going to get, you know, the Chippendales guy. Quarantine Catch-Ups on Corkscrew TV's YouTube channel. Louise, how are you, my favorite falconer? How's it going? I'm good, Patrick. How are you doing? I'm good. I, I don't know many falconers, but I'm sure if I did, you'd still be my favorite. Yes, I'm dead. How's Amadeus? Uh, Amadeus is rocking it. Um, so this time of the year, he is uh, just coming out of um, out of the winter season. He's gearing up for spring training. So winter holidays have ended quite abruptly. And um, I'm working with him a little bit uh, pretty much every day. And uh, we're going to be flying free soon, sorting over those vineyards and scaring away all those nasty birds that are going to think about eating my grapes this fall. Oh, you're always working hard. There's, uh, there's been no pause in that, of course. And I'm, I'm assuming that David's working with you through all this. He is, yes. And he since is. we last were on film, you guys uh, have some exciting news. Winemaker of the year. Well, you know, in most days we can go at least 20 minutes without Dave mentioning that. <laughs> we're, we're working him up to 25 minutes. It's been a slow haul, but we're getting there. <laughs> well, that's exciting and very well earned, as we saw in the episode. Was there a specific wine that was showcased in, in him, in his, uh, his getting of the winemaker of the year? Like, did they look at a specific wine or was it just overall? It's kind of, uh, in some sense, the winemaker of the year is a bit of a lifetime achievement award. They, they really, um, the judges are looking for uh, winemakers that have a variety of wines that are made consistently you know, kind of year in, year out, um, in a really strong, strong um, expression of the varieties. So it's not so much that he makes great Riesling or great Cap Franc, but that he makes Riesling and Cap Franc and Rosé and Sparkling and has done for a number of years with great consistency. And, and I always think that it's a hallmark of a, of a great winemaker to be able to make wines consistently year in, year out, because we do have variations in the season, one season to the next, and in the vintages, so it's um, it, it really reflects um, the last twenty years of winemaking. And of course, in the episode, we were we discovered black sheep riesling in your episode at the winery, and that was amazing. And you have so many different. I remember going through uh, your pockets of different vineyards within your acreage, and it's it's pretty. It's all there. Everything you want is there. And well, and it fun time of the year because the vines were all just sort of waking up from their winter slumber so um the pruning has just been finished and the vines are all being now tied down onto the wires so we're doing a little bit of field work these days and always just is really wonderful to be back outside and it's the spring and um of course after the vines have been pruned then we have to make sure that the wires and the posts are all in good shape so that you're not tying vines down to wires that are broken or compromised. And throughout the vineyard, there are always a few posts that didn't, didn't kind of make it through last year. You know, he might be winemaker of the year, but he's not a tractor driver of the year. <laughs> it's a bit of collateral damage to the posts, and that's got to be finished up before um, the tying gets done. So the workload has not changed, obviously, since last year, but of course, the social distancing, people have to distance themselves from the winery itself. So how are you combating that at Featherstone? Yeah, um, so the tasting room uh, isn't open uh, at the moment. Uh, we do have um, free shipping of wine throughout Ontario. And um, if folks are interested in curbside pickups, then we're happy to um, arrange for, for folks to be able to come and, and um, pick wine up here. And, and it's interesting, you know, we've been shipping quite a lot of wine, which is lovely. And we are very grateful to all those folks who are continuing to support not just Featherstone, but small, independent, family-run businesses, whether it's the local restaurant around the corner or the wineries or the little brew pub. Um, we are very grateful for, for that support, especially these days. And um, so we have been shipping a fair bit of wine. Dave actually awarded himself the title Shipper of the Year the other day. 
um, which is not to be confused with stripper of the year. We had some some confusion around that. Folks thought we were going to get you know the Chippendales guy showing yeah. with their wine shipment, and and a friend of mine was throwing money at her uh, computer monitor when she heard that he was shipper of the year. But no, no, it's it's, it's not stripper. Shipper. Follow your social media very closely, and I, I learned about the stripper and the shipper whole incident, so I'm glad that got cleared up. Yeah, so he put his pants back on and he's getting the wine out now. <laughs> I'm glad things are still uh, light between you two because you work so hard, and it's, it's good to hear that people can stop by Featherstone and pick it up, maybe say hi to Amadeus and look at the beautiful vineyards, and they can also get it shipped to their house if they're in, is it all of Ontario? Yeah, we, well, mostly urban centers. Uh, we have to get all data if we're going to smaller little towns or villages. Um, but certainly any major urban center is a piece of cake, for sure. And in the last week or so, we've been hearing more frequently from folks that they would like to do curbside pickups because I think everybody's just getting a bit of cabin fever and they're like, you know, I'm going to come for a drive. <laughs> I need to get out of the house. And I think that's completely appropriate. And we're happy to arrange to have the wines here for pickup or we can put them in the trunk of your vehicle if if you'd like that as well if that's more convenient so lots of flexibility there and there's lots of big open spaces you know people can still go for they want to take a walk through the vineyard or take a hike on the Bruce Trail or um, you know those kinds of things um, stop at your local restaurant and buy a picnic lunch and bring a blanket and sit out in the grass somewhere those you know those are things that can accommodate social distancing and, and be responsible and still get you out of the house a little bit. And uh, you're right on along the Bruce Trail, like you said, and I know you have a huge involvement with the Muddy Paws event. So if people wanted to bring their dogs along with them and pick up some wine, could they do that? I mean, the dogs need to be on a leash, but you can absolutely do that and go for a walk through the fields. We're happy to, happy to see folks doing that. Beautiful. So who does your shipping? Is it Canada Post or is it... Is it you guys doing it yourself or? Private courier. So there are a couple of couriers in particular um, that work well for us. We don't use a lot to Canada Post unless it's to, as I say, smaller towns or smaller centers. Okay. And, and this can all be accessed through the Featherstone website. But really up to date and really current. And just to, so we have the voice clip, what is your, your website? Uh, um, www.featherstonewinery.ca really and easy and wines page on there which will take you right to the shipping info uh so so to reiterate people can stop by featherstone which is kind of recommended if you want to get out of the house bring your puppy see amadea see the beautiful vines or they can get it shipped just by going to your website and you keep your uh the wine section on your website very up to date as you do with all your social media yep yep for sure and we've added a few uh, wine reviews recently too just so that folks have all the latest information on the wines and anything exciting that we're looking forward to uh, in terms of Featherstone when all this is over? Oh, man, I mean, just a return to some kind of normalcy. I'm not sure what the new normal is going to look like. Um, but we are, you know, looking ahead at the summer and trying to gauge what we'll be still doing for events or not. Uh, at this stage, I think that's a little bit of a wait and see. Um, we bottled in February, so we have some new vintages that we're uh, releasing slowly over the next couple of months and they're delightful they're really fabulous so we're really pleased with the wines that are coming online uh if you can't get out to the winery we do have some wines in the lcbo uh occasionally and there are two releases coming up uh ones out this weekend our seven year blog the 2019 seven year blog so that's a brand new release we're really really thrilled with it um and next, the next vintage is released in the LCBO will be on May 2nd, and that's rosé. And we make it just a killer rosé, which is very food friendly and aromatic and uh, fairly dry, um, but just, just delicious. Mm, you know that our viewers and your fans and wine lovers love options, and we have so many options. Pick up at the winery, go to the LCBO, or get it shipped. Um, I'm guessing that, unfortunately, the pizza oven has been cold and will remain cold for a while. The oven is on hold. Usually that would open on Victoria Day. I think it's fair to say that won't happen this year, but we have fingers crossed uh, for opening in June. Just a bit of a wait and see at this stage. And we've been renovating the uh, tasting room over the, week, over the uh, winter. 
who've been writing, renovating the tasting room this winter. And to have a brand new look for that is some expanded retail space and it's going to be a real farmhouse experience. So um, more on that as our renovations get completed, but that's gonna be really lovely space when it's ready. We're gonna to have to shoot a whole other episode with all these new vintages and renovations going on. I think Thanks. so. Thanks, Louise. It's more work on our hands. <laughs> just, just you can't lay on the couch and eat bonbons quite as much as you're used to. Well, th thank you so much, Louise, for this time. And you're such a huge advocate of Niagara and Ontario wines and the VQA. Uh, it's pre prevalent in your social media and in the episode that we just watched that was released. And uh, keep doing your thing. And we're going to keep uh, checking in with you and and pushing, of course, Featherstone Wines and all Niagara Wines. And for people, if you want to get out, Featherstone is absolutely gorgeous. And it's it's right on, what subappellation is it on again? Uh, we're in the uh, 20 mile bench here. 20 mile bench. So it's not the top of the escarpment, it's not the bottom of the escarpment, but you can see Toronto from it oh, it's and it's, much, it's gorgeous. It's very much near the top. And, and I just want to add, it really is, really is a wonderful industry to be part of. You know, it's a very cooperative wine community down here and we are all doing our best to support each other. You know, I know Good Earth has some wonderful um, meals that they make available for curbside pickup. We got our Easter dinner from them and had some lovely lamb and, um, and roast pork dish. So those are really great options, you know, with a, a local VQA wine. And the wine industry for a long time has had a sense that we're all in this together. And um, now more than ever, uh, we certainly appreciate our neighbors and the support that folks are giving the region generally. I cannot wait to get, like you said, Nicolette and yourself and all of our favorite wine people together and have a nice big party when all this is over and taste your new vintages. It'll be fun. We'll look forward to that day. <laughs> well, I mean introduce you to as well as you know our black sheep Riesling is is a real trademark here and the lambs will be arriving on schedule uh the second week of july so that is uh, something that we we always look forward to and that's uh, a perennial sign of the summer for us why does my mouth water when you say lambs is that bad <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a live in. come on <laughs> Thank you so much, Louise. Say hi to the winemaker of the year, David and Amadeus. And uh, keep doing what you're doing, working hard. And we appreciate so much what you do. And if you haven't seen the episode yet, check it out because Louise and David and Amadeus are amazing. Thanks very much. Everybody take care and be safe out there.